In the news this week, trustees of Christian charities could be removed under proposed government legislation, a new survey shows that most people are opposed to longer Sunday shopping hours, and a paralysed man has walked a short distance after a medical breakthrough. Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Leaked legislation shows that the government could remove trustees from Christian charities, including schools, across England and Wales if they are deemed extremist. The proposal in a draft version of the government's new counter-extremism strategy, seen by the Sunday Telegraph, would give new powers to the Charity Commission to sack trustees. The government's definition of extremism has been criticised for being too broad and likely to catch many peaceful dissenters. A spokesman for the Association of Chief Executives of Voluntary Organisations expressed concern. We support powers to tackle extremism, but we are concerned at how widely these measures could be interpreted. This week, Defend Free Speech, a new campaign supported by the Christian Institute and the National Secular Society, has been launched to oppose the government's plans for extremism disruption orders, or EDOs. The website defendfreespeech.org.uk gives up-to-date information about the campaign and information on how people can lobby their MP about the proposals. A new survey has revealed that the majority of people think longer Sunday shopping hours would cause workers' family life to suffer. The poll of close to 2,000 adults in England and Wales also found that 60% of people think shop workers would be forced to work longer hours if the law changes. The survey, commissioned by the Association of Convenience Stores, showed that just 13% think there is not enough time to shop on a Sunday under the current rules. A separate poll by the ACS showed that 6 in 10 people see Sunday as different from the rest of the week, as it enables shared time with family and friends. The results of both surveys were submitted to the government's consultation on allowing local authorities to extend Sunday trading hours. The Christian Institute has spoken out against the plans, warning that they could put Christians under pressure to choose between their faith and their job. Thousands of messages supporting adoption rather than abortion have been posted on social media in response to calls to celebrate abortion. Activists in the USA used the hashtag ShoutYourAbortion in response to political moves to tackle the controversial abortion giant Planned Parenthood. The instigators of the pro-abortion campaign have attempted to justify their actions. Lindy West commented, I own my body and I decide what I allow to grow in it, while Amelia Bono said her abortion made her happy. One tweet promoting a different message said, Please don't shout your abortion. There are thousands of couples waiting for a chance to adopt your baby. Choose life, you won't regret it. Last year, the Christian Institute produced a series of powerful videos about people who've been affected by abortion. One of the stories in the Choose Life series focused on Gary Moore, who was conceived through the violent rape of a 17-year-old mother. I, I have lived such a fulfilled life coming from uh, what some people would class as very, very poor beginnings. And it seems to me that God's been um, saving my life even before I was born. I've, um, some of the things in my life, I've been, I've been a soldier, I've been in the French Foreign Legion, I've been into a place like North Korea and all these other different countries around the world, often in difficult circumstances, um, with some uh, pretty close scrapes at times. And I can look back over my life and think to myself, if, if I had been aborted, none of these things would have happened. And finally... A US man who lost the use of his legs following a spinal injury has walked a short distance after doctors rerouted his brain signals in a medical breakthrough. 26-year-old Adam Fritz was left using a wheelchair following a motorbike accident five years ago. But doctors at the University of California have managed to bypass his damaged nerves by transmitting signals from his brain to electrodes around his knees. The technique didn't involve controversial embryonic stem cell research. Instead, Dr. Ando, who co-led the study, explained that a computer system detects when the brain waves change from a state of not walking into a state of walking. After extensive mental and physical training and 19 unsuccessful attempts, Fritz was able to walk over three and a half metres. He said taking those steps was incredible and urged others who find themselves in a similar situation to never give up hope. You can just look at the world around you, you know, life, life doesn't end when you're paralysed, you know. It, it keeps going, and I, I wanted to be an active participant in that life. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.